there was a certain man in, Lazar- in, in Bethany, Lazarus. He was the sister of Mary and Martha. He was sick. Mary, this was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. Lazarus, her brother, was the one who was sick. So the two sisters therefore sent a message to Jesus saying, Lord, behold, your friend whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said to his disciples, this illness is not unto death, but rather for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified by it. And Jesus loved Martha and loved Mary and loved Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, Jesus remained two more days in that place where he was staying. But after this, he said to his disciples, it is time for us now to go to Judea. So when Jesus made it to Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany is near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Judeans who had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother's death were there. Martha, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went out to meet him while Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to him, your brother shall rise again. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even if they die. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who comes into the world. Once she had said this, she went back, called her sister aside and said privately to her, the teacher is here, he's asking for you. Now when Mary heard this, she rose quickly and ran out to Jesus. Jesus was still outside the village where Martha had met him. Now the Judeans then who were in the house and were consoling Mary, when they saw her rise up quickly and go out, thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there, so they followed her. And when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. (coughs) And Jesus saw her weeping and the Judeans who came also weeping. And he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said, come and see. And Jesus wept. The Judeans were saying, look how much he loved his friend. But some of them said, couldn't this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept his friend from dying? Jesus, again, was deeply moved within. They came to the tomb tombs in Judea are really caves with a stone lying in the opening. Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha said to him, Lord, it's been four days. It will stink. But Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you have heard me always. I say this out loud so that those standing around may believe that you are the one who sent me. Having said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, the one who had died, came out, bound, head to toe, with the burial wrappings. Even his face was still wrapped up with the cloth. And Jesus said, unwrap him and let him go. I'm going to get that. We're hooked. We're going. Power is on. John makes it really clear. Um, these are friends of Jesus. Okay. Martha, Mary, Lazarus, they're his friends. They're good friends. Their relationship is a complicated one because they also call him rabbi and lord. 
but there's, they're very close. So you can understand why they would send a message to him. Uh, and you would have thought that when he got the message, he would have hurried as quickly as possible to get there instead of waiting two more days, <laughs> which is what he did. He waited two more days. We, we know in the text, the part I didn't read, that Jesus actually informs his disciples. He says, well, we have to go now. He says, Lazarus has, is asleep. And his disciples are like, oh, if he's sleeping, he'll get better, because everyone knows that when you're sick, you go to bed, and then you feel better when you wake up. And then Jesus goes, uh, no, no, I, meant, I didn't mean that literally. It was figurative. He's died. And then, and then they leave. So they're there two days. Lazarus dies. They go two more days. Lazarus is... It's four days. Jesus could not have gotten back in time. He would have missed Lazarus' death. So if he had come right away, he still would have missed, he still would have been a couple days late. So now he shows up four days late, which means when Lazarus is good and dead, not just dead, good and dead. This is the middle of the week. They're sitting Shiva. Do you know sitting Shiva? Are you familiar with this tradition? So in our, in the way we do things, typically somebody dies, there's a whole bunch of preparation stuff that happens, and then there's a funeral service that's four to seven days after the person has died, and, uh, and, then, and then you're done. And so you grieve up to the funeral, and then when the funeral happens, there's this feeling like, okay, now you're done. Now, it's, now you have to go back to work the next day, or whatever. Um, in Jewish tradition, you have to be buried within 24 hours. So that's absolutely critical, 24 hours. And so the, right away, the body's cleaned, wrapped, put into the tomb. And then you, then you have seven days, and it's called sitting shiva. You s basically stay at home. You wear, you wear some symbol of mourning sackcloth or something like that. Um, and people come to visit you. And they bring food, and they try to keep you company. And, and, but you don't do anything. You don't work. You just sit in your grief. Um, by the way, in a modern Jewish uh, experience of sitting shiva, the food is awesome. I just, just want to say that. I know that's insensitive of me to say, but it's the, the, uh, that's when I had potato blintzes for the first time. And I'm just going to say they're delicious. And, and you think after you've had two that three or four more will be just fine, but it's not. Trust me. They're, you just you stick with two, okay? They're delicious, but... My wife's like, you shouldn't eat all those, because she grew up in a community that was basically half Gentile, half Jew, and so she, she knew these things. She knew this food. She was like, I mean, she was the one who said, oh, potato blisses, these are awesome, but you know, she knew not to eat a bunch like me. So just saying, just remember that. Mm -hmm. Jesus arrives four days after, after his friend has died, and Martha meets him on the edge of town. And you can understand what she says. She's like, why? Why'd you wait? If you'd have been here, if you'd have been here when he died, this is one of the things we do when we're grieving, is we, we always run this scenarios in our head where it could have been different. If only this had happened, if only we'd called sooner, if only I'd made him go to the doctor, if only you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. And, and Jesus, now, from where Jesus was located, there was no way for him to get back in time. I just want to keep reminding you of that. But he just looks at her, and what can you say to that? I'm sorry I wasn't here. He says, your brother will rise again. I mean, let's be clear on this. Jesus knows what he's got planned. Your brother will rise. Well, I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection of the dead. Now, Martha, Martha, by the way, is the calm one just so you know, should know this, the two sisters. Martha's the calm one. She's the organized one. And Mary's the flighty one, the uber-emotional one. She's like all over the place emotionally. Everything is huge for her. You know, it's either really bad or really huge. And it, Mary's actually the one who attracts people's attention because of the I intensity of her emotional place. That's why uh, when Martha went out to meet Jesus, nobody noticed when Mary gets up to go out and see Jesus, it's such a dramatic thing. Everyone follows her because she doesn't just quietly slip out. When, when her sister comes back and says, the Lord is here, she's like, oh, 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 and goes running out the door. And everyone else goes, oh, she must be going to the tomb. So, I mean, she's, she's got this huge emotional presence. 
This is, this is the source of friction between the two sisters. We learn this in other stories. So Jesus says to Martha very famous words. He says, you know, your brother's going to rise again. She says, I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection, the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? We, we get the gist that, that he probably said something similar to Mary too, but I'm not sure Mary heard it. Because both Mary and Martha, Martha calmly, if you'd have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. When Mary gets there and says it, it was, would have been a lot louder. <gasps> oh, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. Which causes the people around to sort of be thinking about this. They're, they're, they're noticing this too. They ask the question, some of them, couldn't this man who healed someone who was blind help his friend? So I, I need for you to have this scenario. Here's Jesus. Here are all of these upset people. He's got, he's got his friends, his dear friends, Mary and Martha, weeping over the death of another dear friend. All of these other people are, are troubled and confused by this. And there he is, standing there with them. And then we have literally the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And you look at this and you're thinking, what's that about? I mean, he knows what he's going to do. He knows he's going to raise him from the dead. He knows what's coming. They're about to go to the tomb. They're going to knock open the, the gravestone. They're going to object. Oh, it's going to stink. He's like, trust me. It's going to be okay. They have this comedy scene at the end where Lazarus is like, he can't even see. I mean, is he bumping into the walls as he comes out? You know, he's all wrapped up in, in the grave clothes. Even he's still got the thing on his head. You know, you're like, ah. And, and, and here's this moment before that he weeps. And the question we've got to ask is, why in the world was he weeping? I mean, come on. He knew what was coming. He knew the glory that was showing up. He knew what was happening. Why was he weeping? I mean, the, we understand them weeping. We understand ourselves weeping when we weep because we know, yes, we believe the resurrection of the dead. We believe that the people we love and lose, we're going to see them again one day. We believe that, but we're not there yet. And so we sit here in the midst of it but for God, they can't be that way, right? God knows the resurrection of the dead. For God, it's like, God, you, don't, you don't have to worry about it. It'll be okay. But Jesus doesn't pat them on the head and say, oh, stop it. Don't weep. You see, as much as Jesus knows what's coming and as powerfully as, the, as he's about to demonstrate that he is the resurrection of the life, his friend still died. And, and two others of his friends are heartbroken. And he weeps. I've done a lot of um, funerals, obviously, as part of being a pastor. Sometimes when I do funerals for people, I don't really have any idea who they are. I, met them, I, I meet them through their families, you might say, as they tell me the stories of the life. But um, sometimes it's people I love and know well. And there was one time when uh, a man had died, and um, and I so I went out to see uh, his his widow, and so I, you know I called first, so they knew I was coming, and she was sitting on the steps of the house when I arrived, waiting for me, and uh, it was raining. I remember that it wasn't a heavy rain, but it was kind of a crummy day, and I got out and I walked up. And I sat down next to her, and we just sat there for a long time and wept. That's all. We didn't talk. We just wept. And I kind of realized in that moment that this is what Jesus is doing. Even though there's resurrection, even though Jesus knows he's about to raise uh, Lazarus from the dead, even though... He still sits in that grief place and weeps with his friends. When someone we love dies, they're in glory, right? There's a party going on in heaven. There are people saying, welcome home. But that doesn't mean that God is up there going, oh, don't worry, it'll be okay. Because we see in this story that God sits with us and weeps with us. 
even at the same time as there's rejoicing in heaven. God is with us, weeping too. And because of that, there will be a day that we rejoice also with God. God of great compassion, we are not far off and distant, removed from all my griefs. Instead, you have chosen to know fellowship with me in sorrow that I might know fellowship with you in joy. You have come to weep tears of anguish that I might not weep alone. As you have shed the tears of human pains with me, let me exclaim with you the shouts of divine joy. I ask this in Jesus' name, my resurrection and my life. Amen. Yeah.